um, Nine Perfect Strangers live show <laughs> to like prepare and see how you can do And I just love how like chill your live shows are. Yeah, I think we're live. live. Hey everyone. Yes, we are live. Hello, my little mooncakes. Happy. It should still be a full moon, but you mm -hmm. know, time zones. So it's a little late this this month. It's no biggie. But we're talking mm -hmm. about Black Sunshine by we Karina. Are. Okay, how do you say the last name? Is it Karina Halley Hale? Oh, I think in the audiobook they said the second one that you said. I think that's how it goes. Hale? Yeah, some like Halle or something. Halle. Something like that. I don't know. I was listening to it on like 2.5 speeds, so I could be like completely butchering it. So I'm not even going to attempt. So, mm. so yeah. Karina, our girl Karina. Our girl Karina. Look at this well loved book. Like, it's I love crazy. that. It's broken. <laughs> the spine is broken. It's okay. So, obviously, we all know I gave it five stars. <laughs> Spoiler! I gave a spoiler on my Instagram story, but I don't I know, know, like you were you were like telling me on my on Messenger, you were like texting me like, don't tell me what you think, and then you post your rating. I was like, <laughs> Jennifer. I usually spoiler don't post alert. my rating. I usually don't, but when I give it five stars, like it's obvious because I won't shut the fuck up about it. A little bit shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> I couldn't shut the fuck up about it either. I was like, well, I don't want to get into spoilers, but there were certain scenes. <laughs> I mean, I usually go into spoilers whenever it just naturally flows into spoilers. So, <laughs> I mean, okay. Let me put my little banner up. I also forgot to monetize this again, like I always freaking do. So I'm going to do that. But in the meantime, what was your rating? <laughs> I, um, well, let me, let me just say this. Because, like, I was messaging you for the most of the first act because that's um, I didn't know that you were not, that you didn't like knowing what people thought until the live show itself. So I was like telling you about the setup yeah. and I did really love the first act. Like the whole thing about um, when she gets, you know, kidnapped from the Uber and she's going to get auctioned off. That was so stuff. scary. Right? Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> Well, the one thing I will say I did love that I think this author did really well was that she managed to show how the lust for blood was very sexual. Like when there was the drinking of blood, it was like a very like ecstatic sexual experience. And that was just so, I don't think I've seen that before. I feel like the only time I've ever seen like a sexually um, charged bloodletting scene in a, in a vampire story was um, in Interview with a Vampire. Um, the film by, the, well, the film based on the book by Anne Rice, but um, I gave this book one star. No, pause you for, fucking did it. Pause for booze. Oh, wait, shit, I wasn't supposed to read that. Yeah, I absolutely hated it. This book is, this is terrible. This book was, Jan, this book was stupid. This was dumb. Like, this is one of the stupidest books I've ever fucking read. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not me about to cry. Oh my god. Hey, I mean, this is a book that has lines, and <clears throat> may I quote, <laughs> I have darkness in me too. Okay. That was like, the second that line came out, I was like, this is horrible. This is so bad. Okay, and I recognize that the writing is mediocre, that it's- No, like everything, like literally, um, well, what, what did you like about it? <laughs> Um, or do you I want really... me to keep quoting? Because like I have like a whole constellation of things to pick from. Um, we, you are my weakness, Lenore. Um, <laughs> I thought that was then, so cute. I oh, thought it fuck was so off. Cute. And then, wait, the best one. This was my favorite one. I, <laughs> I am not your whole. I am not your whole. And then he goes, "You are my whole heart." Fuck off with this bullshit. <laughs> this is the dumbest book I've read so far this year. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wow, I'm go, honored. Tell me, tell me what you thought. <laughs> I I loved the character. <laughs> I mm -hmm. love I I like the like I liked how the steamy scenes were like tasteful, you know. They weren't like too too erotica, <laughs> you know. Um but it also wasn't, you know, tame. And then like it was easy for me to follow. I have very low standards when it comes to world building, okay? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it did have a lot of cringy lines, okay? And I recognize that. But Wait, can I just say, like, apologies if I look here? Because, like, I have, like, my notes 
So like, oh, I'm, not, like I'm not like, ignoring you. I'm like I'm trying to. Um, oh, I think there's a double up. There's an echo. None. None. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know. We'll see if people in the chat because like I can hear an echo. Anyway, um, anyway. So yeah, what else did you like about the book? Um. Yeah, that Uber scene was super terrifying. Like, just imagining myself. I have notes, too. That's why I'm looking down. But just imagining myself in that situation just freaks me out. Like, I was not expecting. I don't know. It was giving me, like, urban fantasy vibes because it talks about, like, TikTok and, you know, Uber and Instagram and all that. Tesla. Um, Tesla. <laughs> yes, Tesla. And, like, having monster erotica on her Kindle. Like... <laughs> Yes, I remember that. I, I sent Sarah that screenshot because she was telling me about Monster Erotica. Wait, I'm going to just like, I might freeze because I need to like change my router. Okay, yeah, someone says they hear an echo too, so. Okay, let me go through comments while you figure that out. First time joining on a Full Moon Book Club discussion. Thank you for being here. You're so cute. Haven't read the book, but I was curious after Jan's Instagram stories. Oh okay, my god. Okay, my back, my back, my yes. back. Yes. All right, yes. here I am. Okay, okay. um. Here so... I am. I'm so glad you gave it one star, honestly. Like, in a way. Like, I was expecting <laughs> 2.5 to 3, and I still would have been, like, huh? But, like, one star. And then, like, the polar, yeah, like, the polarizing... <laughs> the polar opposite ring. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, I, I don't. I mean, obviously, I can't, you know, you know, disagree with your. All right. Obviously, I can't disagree with what you liked about the book, but the way I saw it was that it was a, you know, just like a lazy, half baked pastiche of every single, you know, urban fantasy kind of book. Like the first entire forty percent was giving me City of Bones. Like literally like her going to a club and seeing like a mysterious guy and then like her parents aren't who they say they are and then she comes back and she like has tattoos just like Clary has those runes, you know. Oh it was God. just like, um, so it was just like a very uh, generic pastiche of all these like other stories I've seen so far, but with R-rated sex. But like even the sex scenes were so boring and so repetitive and so like heteronormative. Like literally I can like quote, like they're tattooed in my brain because I feel like I read the same scene like seven times. Like he goes in slowly and slams into the hilt. I was like, oh my God. And she comes like 70 times in this book. She comes with him, he blows her vagina. He I <laughs> Okay, that, yeah. He like breathed for two he seconds. Her vagina. Like, they're they're in a restaurant. He cups her vagina through her leather and she squirts pussy juice like, all up in his fucking hand in public. And I'm like, this is this is so painful. I, this is not a good time, girl. Okay, you gotta reenact your interpretation of the bathtub okay, okay, scene okay. now. <laughs> so there's so, this bathtub scene where the dude was really hard and she mm, wanted him just, but he yeah, was like just, he was like i'm I, i'm gonna hurt you and then make let me just paint, okay let me just paint a picture for everybody in the chat so she um so she has just become a vampire because like when you become 21 you turn into a vampire so it's very <laughs> beautiful creatures if you are familiar with that like when they turn into a witch in that book mm -hmm. so that was like very similar in this book and you have this thing called bloodlust, which means like you are desperate to drink blood and desperate to have sex. So she's super horny. She sees him. He's like, literally, he says, I don't want to fuck you to the, to the point where he makes this guy named Wolf, like fuck her for two days. Oh my because, God. Yeah. Yeah. Just as, just as an aside, I was so mad about the fact that they got us all hot and bothered with Wolf. And then they set him up with Amethyst. I'm like, what the fuck? I want a threesome. <laughs> A three fucking songs. That would have that would be good. Damn. I want her bent over. I want dick in the mouth, dick in the pussy, impale that fucking bitch. Like, <laughs> what the, what, you know, you know. I'll let you know if something happens in the sequel. Then. If something happens like that in the second book, like I was so disappointed with how like boring the sex was. I was like, where are the you know blood orgy rituals? Where is the threesome? Where <laughs> amethyst? There's a woman named Amethyst. Okay. So, <laughs> So we go to the scene with the bathtub. He's mm -hmm. like, you need to drink blood for me, but I don't want to have sex. And he's all splayed out, hairy chest, muscular, you know, all like, and his dick is hard. He has like a fucking like straight up boner just like <laughs> looking her in the face. And she gets turned on. She gets in the bathtub. As she should, you know. 
Like, you should. Like, like, okay, I was like low key cheering in this scene, regardless of what I thought of prior. I was like cheering for her in this scene. He's like, and she bites his neck. They're getting it on. And she wants to fuck. Like, she wants that dick in her snatch. And he's like, no, I can't. And I'm like, what the fuck? Are you giving me blue balls, Karina? Bitch, what the fuck? And so I'm like, why doesn't they want to fuck? And I'm like, and you know what? He I pulled was an Edward him. Cullen. He pulled an Edward Cullen. For he sure. pulled an Edward Cullen. He's like, <laughs> okay, you have to be chaste, you know, to entertain the Stephanie Meyer people. But then she echoed my sentiments and she was like, I want to fuck this dick. I want to fuck this dick. I want to bounce on this dick. And then she she takes the dick and she grabs it and she's like, let me, let me put this dick in my pussy. And he's like, no, give it back. And she's like, no, I need to show <laughs> And then she was like, it was really borderline. It was pretty much sexual. I know. She was like taking his boner and she was like grabbing it. She was like trying to shove it in her so hard. And he was like, get the fuck off me. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, go get Wolf. <laughs> wolf. <laughs> uh, who, who did you ship her with? Um, honestly, at first I was like, ooh, who's this Atlas Poe mysterious creature, you know? <laughs> And then I was like, okay, no, not at all. And then Absalon. Yeah, I was glad that they were together. Yeah, but like Absalon, his nickname is Salon. I know. Is nickname- that how the audiobook said it? I wasn't sure if it was like Solon or Salon. Or- Regardless if it's, okay, that sounds like colon, which is like lower oh, end, to sure. end, which is pretty gay, honestly. <laughs> where, the, where that's attached to. Anyway, oh so um, Absalon. He was like, no, I mean, like, an actual scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but someone. I, I, I highlighted the page because I sent Jana's screenshot. <laughs> someone else DNF this book. Okay. That's okay. I All bought right. the sequel immediately after page 414. So. <laughs> but here's the thing like, what's a hotter name, though? Like, do you, like, imagine hot men when you visualize these books? Sometimes. This one, yes. Because- I imagined a hotter guy for a guy named Wolf than I did for Absalon, you know? (laughs) Well, no, because the way they described him, I was able to visualize him really well with, like, his dark hair and his, like, all black. Oh, my God, there was that one line. I don't know if you'd remember this, and you might have been checked out by this time. Mm. But but there was this one time where he walked out, and I think he was going on a date with Lenore or something, and he was in all black, everything. And then I think it was Wolf that walked out and was like, are you trying out for bad boy number two in a high school musical? And I fucking cackled. <laughs> I remember that line. Wait, wait, wait. Can we talk about the scene where they fuck in the black sunshine surrounded by zombies watching them? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so explain what the black sunshine is for the people who don't. Okay, so the black sunshine is basically this ability where you can enter this dimension, which is like the antechamber to hell essentially <laughs> like if you go lower you like go closer to hell and in there there are like you know dead vampires and demons and devils and shit that's where they keep their corpses that's where they kept her okay so you can <laughs> essentially you can teleport through the black sunshine and the black sunshine is where they keep her dead friend her friend gets killed okay jan can we wait, wait can, can i just tell you about um the scene what's the friend's name the fr- L no, L L, L. L right. Yeah. Okay, so L gets killed. <clears throat> he puts her in the black sunshine, and Absalon like is like, you can't save her. You cannot save your friend. And she's like, let me save my friend. And he's <clears throat> like, you can't. And then they have sex in the next chapter. They fuck in the next chapter after her friend dies. <laughs> I forgot the chronology of that, but yeah, that is very true. No, 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 no. Okay, her friend dies at the end of chapter 16, because I took down notes, and then right in chapter 17, she's, like, t- talking about her grief, and then they fuck. <laughs> and then they fuck in public, and, like, all these people, and she's like, can we, <laughs> she's, like, he's, like, dead inside her, like, fucking slamming into her, and she's like, oh my god, can they see us? Then did she you know, try to process if she was being watched, getting absolutely I fucking <laughs> I mean, was that the first Was that the, like the first time they did doggy style? And she was like, we need to add this to our repertoire. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, wait. And then he was like, he was like, I've never done that before. And she was like, doggy style? And he was like, no, fucking the black sunshine. <laughs> like in all his, like, he's like a thousand years old. He is, like, he is the first stepson of the very first vampire. Okay, who <laughs> Yeah, who existed like all those years back then. He is the first stepson of the very first vampire. 
who existed like from the beginning of time or some shit like that. Like you that's know. what I spoiled myself in when I was reading the synopsis of the second um for, of the sequel. That's what mm -hmm. I spoiled myself in is like that that was his dad. And I was like, are you kidding me? Oh, yeah, because yeah, they only reveal that like near the very end. Yeah. And it's not even him. Was it him who reveals that, or was it Amethyst? Because like Amethyst was giving us a lot of his backstory based on. I know, her. like she was. Like, I was like, mind your business, bitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think it was him who told her. But I think she like slow. He didn't explicitly tell her. I think she like figured it out through context from what he was. Okay, saying. so he's like okay, so he's like the son of. He's like the first <laughs> son of like the very the OG vampire, and in all those years, he never you know, fuck the woman's pussy while she was on all fours. Are you kidding? Like, no, but he said, he said, no, that's not what he meant. He said he meant um, fucking in the black sunshine he's never done. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. But still, I don't believe it. I mean, I don't believe it. Like, that's the first time. Like, they literally, like, like during, like, a ball, right? And then, like, they, yeah. like, enter the veil. And then, <laughs> I can't. I literally can't. And then can we talk about that fucking scene? Where Matt's neck just gets twisted? <laughs> jealousy issues. Those are jealousy issues, Jan. <laughs> He's so possessive. Oh my gosh. Wait, it was Not Matt, a... right? Was Matt her yeah. ex? Or no, it was just like... Some... Um, Matt was the guy who she was having an on and off relationship with, but they broke up and then he was dating this like new woman and then he lied to the new woman that she came on to him in the first party. And then the new woman was like bitchy to her. And it was just like, oh my God, it was so catty. It was so painful. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was an absolute asshole. And then she like, she like went on a rampage. She's like, I just want to. And then she bit his fucking neck, like the vampire she is. <laughs> but I, actually, I actually like dug that scene. I was like, I kind of like <laughs> cheered her. I was like, yes, he's being an asshole. Go girl, get your thing. Cause like, I've been, I've been reading the Mindfuck series, which is like a revenge, reve um, woman revenge book series. And just like every single semblance of like female revenge, regardless of what I think of the book, I will stand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then Absalon just fucking finished him. And then when Absalon fucking ripped, literally ripped the heart out of that one dude, yeah. I was like, get you a guy who? I know. I know. Some I dude, know. like, literally Wait. looked looked at Lenore and then Absalon. No, was he bit her. Remember, he bit her and he was like, she is the daughter of Jeremiah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He bit her, know. but, like, basically looked. <laughs> I know. I No, 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 no. I mean, like, it's. I feel like it's more than that. Because, okay, so he bites her. And then, like, apparently when you drink somebody's blood, you, like, um can have, have access to their memories. Yeah. So who is Jeremiah's? Why is her being the daughter of Jeremiah so important? Like, did you get anything from that um, specific section? I think I spoiled myself there too. I don't remember if I read that from the synopsis or from, or from um, the actual book, but yeah. he's a big deal, and I don't want to spoil it if it's not like, in the first book. So, yeah, because like the backstory was so convoluted. It was like, okay, so she is the daughter of somebody who was a vampire, but like the the man who impregnated the vampire was like was, was a, a witch. witch. Yeah, but so like, she's yeah. half vampire, half witch, which I really dug. Yeah, but like the thing, the thing that I personally found to be really convoluted and just like weird was like that whole thing, that whole sorry excuse for like uh, w vampires are horny and witches aren't, which is why a witch would never fuck a vampire. It's like why, <laughs> why? Like literally, the only explanation was that vampires are horny and witches are, I don't know, healers. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. I'm trying to look at the, oh, so I like looked up the second book and it's called The Blood is Love. And there was this cheesy moment where it said the blood is love in this book. And I was like, really? Really? Okay, Lee Bardugo, <laughs> you know, putting. Oh, oh God, I am not, a, like Lee Bardugo, I don't get the hype with her like at all. I mean, I read Six of Crows, two stars at best, honestly. And then I read Shadow and Bone and it was horrible. It was. <laughs> so bad well that <laughs> one's like a younger audience i know it's um shadow and bone i haven't read i think i read shadow and bone like early high school but i know i don't know if you heard but like at the end of like i think the last chapter of ninth house she puts she like hides the title of the second book in there somewhere so everyone was like trying to figure it out for like a week <laughs> but um 
I did um, want to say that this book was good at like, because they mentioned how when you're a female, you turn and you turn 21, you become a vampire. And then when you're male, it's at 35. And then they mention like, if you don't identify as one or the other, then it's like in between those two ages. So like, it's very, you know, it represents non-binary. It does. It said that multiple times too. So. Okay, is that really non-binary representation when you put one sentence in? There was another part too where it was like something about being non-binary. I don't know the fact that it was that in is, there. I know, that is like that does not count. That is literally Disney making two women kiss at the end of Star Wars okay, and saying like lesbians <laughs> in the background, like blurred a yeah. little bit. <laughs> I was like, when did that happen? And it was like apparently like a one second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, true, 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 true. <laughs> oh my god, I just turned randomly to the page with the you have the darkness in me too. Or I have darkness in me too. <laughs> I'm fucking screaming. <laughs> um, let me... I swear, the sex scenes in that book have all the appeal of me doing this. Like me doing this is hotter than anything that came out in that book. I don't know. That just me. <laughs> I will say too that like Lenore's inner dialogue was super childish at times. I was just like, what 21 year old thinks like this? Like, why? <laughs> I can't think of examples. But... Yeah, I feel like, I mean, um, the author, I highly doubt the author is like our age. So I feel mm -hmm. like Karina was trying to attempt to convey what somebody our age would sound by watching TikTok. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, I, yep. And, you know, I like, what is millennials like? What is the, not, not even millennials. I mean, like, 21, that's like Gen Z. Like, what are the Gen yeah. Zs? Like, what are the hip kids up to these days? <laughs> the not the other girls is, you know. And then just try to, like, weave that, in, force it in. Not even weave. I know, I know. It's like, okay, I got a bit TikTok. I got a bit Tesla. Monster <laughs> porn. I mean, like, I've been reading that, so the kids probably read that. I'm going to throw that in there. It's like, <laughs> a fucking <laughs> checklist. <laughs> Like, what are the kids into? Chick, chick, chick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm screaming. And like, honestly, I reject the entire like premise behind their relationship because when we got to the part when he said that like he was watching her since she was like born, that yeah. was just no for me. Like that is like Phantom of the Opera. Like, do you are you familiar with that musical? Because no, he no. literally, it's about this guy um who lives inside this opera house, and he was like. Um, he lives inside the walls and he was spying on this like young girl and essentially just, like talking to her through the walls as she was growing up and it was just so uncomfortable I was like oh my god you didn't like it I ha I own the book no 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 I love the musical it's my favorite musical okay oh. I'm just saying I didn't ship her. I'm just saying I didn't I'm just saying I didn't ship her with him I shipped yeah. her with Raul because he they, they met at an, an age appropriate time he wasn't a grown man observing a child in her oh formative my god. Years, you know <laughs> yeah um, yeah I saw that I wrote like when he told her all that stuff like I wrote like why isn't this bitch creeped out the, at the slightest yeah. like she was like grateful she was like oh my god I wasn't alone the whole time you were watching over me I always had a guardian angel like the fuck <laughs> I would have been like okay Joe Goldberg <laughs> so, so, so gross honestly I was like getting freaking like flashbacks to Credence with how gross I was finding that um <laughs> Um, yes, Sarah, that's my favorite um, music. I saw it live and I like teared up so many times. It was epic. Anyway, so just back to Black Sunshine. Um, so he is apparently observing her her whole life. He admits he always found her beautiful. And then like on the day she turns, she explicitly says that she wants him to uh, deflower her, you know, be the first vampire sexual experience. And then he makes this random guy that she's never met named Wolf. Good. Yeah, two days, like what? Two day, literally two days straight, like sh like nonstop. Like she didn't. She was like, that was two days because time is like warped in this world. Yeah, I mean, I gotta say that like this was the most graphic pussy eating scene I've ever read in a book, and I've read Axe Staff, so. <laughs> yeah, I wrote it. I was it page one ten. Was that because I wrote in my notes page one ten quote tongue on pussy. <laughs> So, yeah, no. it was like <laughs> within <laughs> at that point <laughs> i don't know i think that was with absalom wolf yeah. was a lot earlier i think but yeah. yeah um the the wolf scene was like i think it was it was it was in the first 30 percent like it was like her first 
experience as a vampire with the lust. Oh, was- just kidding. Yeah, that was definitely Wolf. I just read the beginning of the page. Yeah, tongue on pussy, finding me drenched, head buried between my legs. I scream, the sound bouncing off the walls. <laughs> Oh my yeah. God. yeah, I don't know. I just loved it. And I'm reading the sequel right after Akasif. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Go ahead and spoil that book for me because like I want to know the tea because like I will admit that I was really interested in the um <clears throat> the whole story about the first vampire Scarda or something. Mm-hmm. How do you pronounce the name? Sc- Scarda or whatever? I in so, my head, yeah, Scarda. Sparta, the first vampire guy, like I was really intrigued with the fact that he ultimately like wanted her because of like, you know, her um, blood mix and, you know, her genetic code. So, but I felt that this book, um, the conflict, it, it, it severely lacked an interesting conflict. It severely lacked an interesting villain. Like the most interesting thing the, all the tension was like hinged on whether or not they were going to end up together, and I just didn't find that substantial enough. Because it's a dark the- romance. It's it's pitched as a dark romance. It's not like fantasy, you know. Well, who was the villain? Like, who was the antagonist? Like, who was stopping them from getting together? Right? Was it that That's random guy that popped up in the end? Was it Atlas Poe? Okay, yeah, who the fuck was Atlas Poe and why was he necessary? Like, he he was the one who was, like, her stalker and, like, what was his I role? Know. I feel like he plays a bigger role in the second book. What'd you say? No, oh, um, no, I was also, when I did this, I meant, like, I don't know who he is either because I don't know oh. why he was in the story so early on. I don't know why I had to waste time thinking of a hot guy to cast as him when he was barely in the book. Correct. <laughs> I think yeah. the only one stopping them from getting together was literally Absalon because he didn't want to hurt her. Ugh, girl, that literally <laughs> gave me flashbacks to A Court of Thorns and Roses. And I will admit that I am like the biggest Sarah J. Mass fan, but like I did not give her a pass. That book was A Court of Thorns and Roses. I gave that a one star because like I was like, girl, you can't do this. You cannot That's do a romance so book. That needs to be it. there. <laughs> I gave that one five stars. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> I know. Why do we never agree on anything? Except A Dowry of Blood, of course. Oh my god, A Dowry of Blood wasn't a romance book. A Dowry of Blood was a work of art. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, like people keep calling it a romance, but it's literally an abusive relationship. It's like an anti romance. I know. And like both of us who have been in shitty relationships are like, ST Gibson understands our souls. <laughs> literally, like to the T. So if y'all. You want to skip out on this book? Definitely read A Dowry of Blood. Just saying. Please. A Dowry of Blood is a romance book recommended by Jan. And we know how that goes over here. So, like, the fact that I'm recommend, I put A Dowry of Blood at number seven in my top ten of the best books of the year. So, trust me. It is so fucking yes. good. If you yeah. want steamy vampire scenes but don't want to read this, then A Dowry of Blood is the way to go. Either way, no matter what, A Dowry of Blood is the way to go. Literally, right? <laughs> um, there was another scene that I wanted to talk about, but I forgot. Wait, um, while you think, why don't you why don't we answer that one comment you put up that we didn't yeah. get to? Does, do you recommend like we can it a waste of time? Um, she does. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll. Yeah, I do recommend it. If you want, like, I call it mindless reading. Like, I admit, I know it lacks substance and lacks a lot of things but I loved it. It's probably going to be in my top 10 because it's been like, it's not often where I read a book literally over 350 pages that I'm like, okay, I want to keep reading this book. I, I was reading this like in between um, like patrons at the library. Like I'd read it in line. I'd read it at the gas station. Like literally any fucking sentences I could fit into my day, I would read. And that's like did rare. You have, did you have the audiobook? No, I just like, I'd be like in line at a gas station and I'd be like. <laughs> well, I mean, I will say that I loved the narrator so much because she narrated so slow. So I was able to listen on three times speed and get, get it done quicker. Oh my God. <laughs> so like, yes. They do. So like side note, they do slow audiobooks down. Like one time speed is not like normal speed. Cause like, Ooh. yeah. Cause um, I, someone I know um, listened to the audiobook of Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. Um, in one time speed versus um, whatever, 2.5 or something. And like he watched a re- like a YouTube video of him recording it 
and it was a lot. It would there was a difference. So. Oh, yeah. I don't so know. I mean, that. that's so interesting. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. they speak so slowly, but like when you play it really fast, it sounds really crisp and really clear. Depending on the accent, because like I tried to listen to this guy with an Irish accent, and it was awful. <laughs> I just could not. And the, like the the Den of Vipers one. I, like even at one point five speed, I could not understand them because their accents were not of this world. So we figured out that that was an Irish accent, the Shrek one. No, no, no. The Irish one was. Oh. Um, uh, I think it was an Alice Feeney book because mm. she gets Richard Armitage to do the guy voice, and I hate his voice so much. <laughs> I like the Irish accent in the Normal People audiobook, but I don't know if. Oh, well, I've never read a Sally Rooney. Do you think I'll like it? No. Okay. Because you don't like character-driven books, right? You like plot. Um, I do like character-driven books if I like the character. And I will say that A Court of Silver Flames was a thousand percent a character-driven book. Like that whole thing was Nesta's, um, you know, mental health journey. That's Until what I the last 200 pages, I'm not going to say what happened, but Sarah J. Mass whipped out a finale for the ages. Just, mm -mm. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's why I was so excited to pick it up because everyone says I'd like it more than the previous books because it's more character driven. I don't I know. I gave um I I gave the first Quarter Thorns and Roses um one star, but I gave like everything else five stars. So mm. they're kind of like on this on equal footing but for different reasons. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. I read a Dowry of Blood because of you love to see it. Love to see it. Me too. If it wasn't <laughs> I would have never picked that book up. I didn't even know that that book existed until Jan was like you gotta read this. And I was like, do I though? And then I like, saw they it. They look like vampires, the fuck? <laughs> I know. I was like, okay, um, it's short. I'll get like the trial. I could not stop reading it. Like, like with like the, the little preview, I just, it was, so, it was so fucking good. And like um, visuals from Bram Stoker's Dracula, like those like really fancy, like swooping Francis Ford Coppola cinematography was like playing in my head because of how rich um, S.T. Gibson's dialogue was. Like I got to imagine, especially when they went to Italy. Oh my God, oh my God, girl. Have you <laughs> read the, have you read like the extra chapter that she has on her website? I haven't yet, but no. yeah. Someone just Did said you? it was just like a big steamy epilogue type thing. Like, I don't know. With who? They all separate. <laughs> <laughs> Not a spoiler. Anyway, but yeah, we should we should, we should just like hop on stream. We should just read it right after this live show together. We should right. just like mute and then read and then react together. Anyway, um, what acts of seen? desperation, huh? Oh wait, do you want to talk? What's acts of desperation? Is that another acts book? of desperation? Is more literary fiction, but it also talks a lot about toxic relationships. That's a, that's the next one after a dowry of blood. That's the one that like everyone's like I'm reading this because of you because well, no I one like ever it. talks about it. What? Well, I like that book. Do you like literary fiction? Well, I mean, I'm rereading a little life. Oh so. yeah, I think you'd like it. I think I'm rereading like a little life, and a secret history is like one of my favorite books of all time. So if that oh my those God, right. why did I not um, know that? Did I watch well, your secret history video? I don't remember. My secret history video is like my second most viewed video. I really remember you saying that. I got to watch it again to see if I watched it the first time. But yeah, I love The Secret History too. Okay, so we agree on multiple books. This, this is good. <laughs> oh no, The I'm Secret History is like a, if you dislike that book, I will literally like maybe not want to read books you recommend. That's how much I love that book. Yeah. yeah, I like that book had like eight chapters and I am, I hate long chapters and like eight chapters and 600 pages. Like each chapter was like 60 to 100 pages. I was like, how do I do this? And I did it in like four days. It was fucking wild. I didn't even I didn't even notice the chapter length. I was just like so like into it, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, did you watch the interview that Donna Tartt did with Charlie Rose when she talked about? Okay, so she basically talks about the the fact that that book took ten years to write, and she described her writing process like she takes a notebook everywhere and she seeks inspiration from like everything. Like she'll see a park bench and she'll describe it in her notebook. She'll view a film. And she'll describe how she felt about something and like everything goes into that one book and when i was reading the secret history i was just like i could feel it like i mm -hmm. could feel that this was someone who has lived you know and had things to say and i just was like damn you that's know? so funny that you said that because one of my creative writing classes in college like made us do 
Oh my God, I have it right here. That's so funny. Sure. Let's keep, keep this journal called an ordinary things journal. And mm -hmm. literally my professor was like, go around and just like write about random things and describe it in detail. And I was like, okay, I see. So, oh God. But yeah, I, I mean, think you'd like, I think you'd love acts of desperation actually. Cause okay. you know what a shitty relationship is like. Oh, <laughs> so. <laughs> do we <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna read a little life in april because the buzzword for that month is um big or little so it's like oh perfect. god uh gird your stomach because like it's a lot like i I'm, I'm reading it a second time and i forgot just like how much hanya yanagahara like hates him with like she doesn't just um you know, I mean, like, there's, like, the self-harm, and then there's, like, a bunch of other stuff, and people accuse it of being torture porn because of how frequent it happens. But that's not it. Like, the sad parts come from, you know, scenes about parents feeling inadequate or, um, you know, people feeling that they can't help their depressed friend. Like, those scenes are really hard to read. So, like, mm -hmm. that's, that's the thing. Those are the parts that get me, you know? I'm so excited to vlog that because all the vlogs that I cry at <laughs> do the best, so... Oh my god, I like cried over that book last night and I, the second I picked up my camera to like point it to my face, I just couldn't because it was just such a personal moment and I just, I just could not put that on the internet, you know, Aww. like that's, just, that's like my moment. Like I will describe my footnotes, I will describe my opinions, but like that moment I don't want to share with anyone else. No, nah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like watch me fucking sob. <laughs> I love that for you. I don't know. I mean, like, I, well, I, 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 okay, so, like, the thing with Jude is, like, I feel like Hanya Yanagahara, like, opened up my skull and, like, fished things out that I didn't want to admit to people and, like, put that in that book. And I was, like, I am feeling very violated reading this. Like, I feel like my diary was, like, hacked or something when I was reading the Jude book, you know? That's wild. Okay. Good Wait, okay, so the comment says, I want to read a little life. I have it on like <laughs> good luck. On good Kindle luck. though, I would never read that on Kindle. Just because yeah, it's I'm like my, it's so fucking. I'm long. reading my paperback. Like on my I never read giant books on my um Kindle. I mean it's either an audiobook or I need to have it in my heart in my hands to like feel it finishing. You know mm -hmm. exactly. That's what she said. But um <laughs> I can't just keep swiping. I can't just keep swiping forever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I was watching the Tinder swindler the other mm -hmm. day, or no, it was yesterday, and she was like, "I was a, I've been on Tinder for seven years." <laughs> I was like, "Can you imagine?" <laughs> she's like, "It's a lot of swiping," and she's like, "This Norwegian lady." <laughs> You make anyway. her sound like she comes from like the valley or something. She talked like that though. Maybe she was dubbed. <laughs> but do you know what the Tinder Swindler is about? Yeah, my um my mom watched it and then um she told my dad to watch it and then he watched it and the whole <laughs> the whole time I could just hear comments like she's so stupid, she's so stupid. She is. Oh my god. And now that I think of it. Yeah, you should probably get a physical. I think the thickest book I would read on my Kindle would be The Spanish Love Deception, just because it's a romance. Oh my gosh. I think I heard about that on like Jack Edwards and he was like, go girl, give us nothing. So I'm like, hmm. Oh. <laughs> but then again, like just, I, I would just, that's just like literally like the, the polar opposite of what I read, just given the, the title of that book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could not imagine you. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably Man, no I can't read the Spanish love deception. Mm. <laughs> probably not a single dark scene in that book. Let's be real. We'll see. Yeah. Um, anywho, do we have anything else to say? Oh my God. I have a note that says, I hate that hella is used hella times in this book. <laughs> Did you notice that? Now that you bring it up, I'm getting like <laughs> more flashbacks, honestly. <laughs> That's like further confirmation of Karina being like, what do the kids say nowadays? <laughs> what if she's like not even American and she's just like, what do the American kids say um, nowadays? It doesn't say anything. She lives, oh, she lives on an island off the coast of British Columbia with her husband. Okay, she lives on an island. She doesn't have access to other people. Now we know, okay? Like, you don't have the physical... Um, 
This is a side note too, but you don't have the physical, right? You read it on your tablet. I do not. Okay. And if I did, I would disown it promptly. <laughs> <laughs> um it just it felt like I was reading on my Kindle but as a physical book like the margins and the font are so similar to my Kindle it was weird but yeah that was just a little side note and I like how it feels it's one of those paperbacks that like feel good in your hands you know Ooh, it's, just floppy. <laughs> it's not floppy but no it's not it's well, that's kind of floppy it flops if, if I like fucking whip it but like, yeah <laughs> but like it's pretty stiff I don't know but that's what she said. I know. I saw that coming. <laughs> That's also what she said. I hate us. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what else? I don't... I don't have that many notes, honestly. Like, I literally was so underwhelmed. I mean, I, no, the first note I wrote on my notes app was, I only started taking notes when she got kidnapped by the Uber. Because <laughs> everything before that was just like, what am I here? What am I doing? Like, what? what is this? Yeah, the Uber was terrifying for sure. And I did quote, um, the thing every woman dreads when they step into an Uber, it's happening. And it's like, it's true. I've only taken one Uber by myself ever because my friend ditched me at the bars. <laughs> and yeah, it was terrifying. Like, I'm just, I'm so scared of like that moment where you realize the child locks on and then like, oh you're not God. going the correct direction and oh my god i just can't why you need like a weapon with you you need to like i don't know like attach like something sharp to your keys or something and just have that shit ready to like peg him when he true. Just, you know. true i have mace on me at all times but like good okay <laughs> i need a taser that's what i need oh wait that looks like a vibrator i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> me on our delirious live show with my camera you're this like, is guys, this isn't what you think it is. I swear. <laughs> and then I ended the live show. I hate You're like, guys, this totally doesn't get inserted in my body. Okay. Anyway, that's it. See you next time. Be <laughs> That was literally her in the live show. You guys, literally, McKay, Kat, and Sarah were all in the midst of a discussion about something. I didn't even ask what Kat read, how much she read in the sprints. I just ignored everyone, and I just laid there trying not to be on this live show anymore. It was on my channel. I was the host. So it's like, I was like, okay, guys, before we fall asleep again, I'm going to end this. And no one, no one was talking about being tired. <laughs> And then Sarah have to like help her mom like the next day or something. Yeah, like manual labor type shit. How do you do that? How do you stay up the entire evening and then work the next day? It's like, God. like, and she is like the best at twenty four hour readathons because she can like literally accommodate so much book in her eyes and her mind. That's like, <laughs> I, I cannot know. read a full book in a day. Like, I just literally don't have the mental bandwidth. Two days, <laughs> sure. One day. Actually, I did read a whole entire book in one day just the other day. I read The Arrangement by Kirsten Maudlin. Oh, I just watched Gabby's blog on that one. Did you like it's, it? Yeah, I did. It was amazing. Well, I don't want to say it was amazing, but it was like... um. Well, I like a good domestic thriller with crazy bitches, okay? Mm -hmm. So, The Wife Between Us, The Couple Next Door, The Wives, you know, The Arrangement, The Swap. Robin Harding. Ew, they all start with the. Right? Oh my goodness. So like, <laughs> basically, books like that. And I was in the mood, and that book had that a lot of that. But then the, the last, like, 30%, can I talk about the twists? Like, I was buddy reading it with my friend Megan, and we were just, like, head-exploding emoji. We were just like, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I'd like it? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't think you'd like it, but I think, I don't, well, I mean, I, I, I can't say what you would, um, how you'd react, but I can promise you will be unable to put it down. Okay. That's my thing. Okay. I look, did it, is it recent? Why is everyone talking about it right now? Like a recent it release? Came out at the beginning of last year. Oh. Um, and then, I don't know, it got, I only started hearing about it a, around this year and it was going around, you know, various thriller circles, basically people saying it's short, it's fun. The audiobook's only like under six hours, but I read it with my eyes. Oh, <laughs> Ebooks e are cheaper than audiobooks, okay? I got to do what I can do, okay? <laughs> yes, yes. I was gonna say something about 24 hour readathons. I forgot. Oh, I was gonna say, yeah, so Sarah freaking made it through the whole night. 
I slept for an hour and a half and then I worked out the next day. So I was proud about that. But yeah, that was my most successful 24 hour readathon. Nice, nice. I'm surprised I... you're not good at them because you stay up late all the freaking time. Yeah, but I sleep until noon. <laughs> Oh. Well, no, I mean, I don't sleep. That's not like a normal thing. I normally get up at around nine, but that's because I go to bed um, early. But like, you know, sometimes, well, I, I changed my sleeping schedule because, you know, I had to for the sake of stability. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I can't function on not much sleep. The only, I technically did do a 24 hour readathon when I read Ice Planet Barbarians because I, I read that book on zero hours of sleep. Mm. And that blog was apocalyptic. <laughs> Is it spoiler free? It is. No, it's filled with spoilers oh, because there's so much like alien sex. And she describes an alien dick in such graphic detail that I just had to talk about it. And then on her Instagram, she posted a dildo that was that alien dick. Literally, there is alien penis dildo on her Instagram feed. That's so funny. You know, um, that brand that I rep, Hello Lovely Box, that I talk about all the freaking time. What's that? It's like this small business that I'm like a rep for and they send me stuff every month. Um, there's this mug that says something about alien dick on it. I, I have to show you. <laughs> I swear to God. Gosh, it's not the cutest design, but it's just funny that it says alien dick. Anyway. Is it like alien dick? Or is it just, I don't know. what is No, it? <laughs> it's just a mug and it has a graphic on it. Ew, can you imagine? <laughs> I'm crying. Can we, since we're talking about freaking mugs and shit. So I went to Duncan and the one that lived, the, the one that lives, the one that's right by where I live always fucks up my order. Like that does not have creamer in it. Like look how brown that is. That does not have creamer. So what I did was I tried fixing it with whipped cream because your girl ran out of fucking creamer. Um, mm -hmm. I got to go grocery shopping. I don't go grocery shopping until I run out of coffee creamer. Um, so what I did was put a shit ton of whipped cream in this and then poured the coffee and I fixed it. And I was so proud of myself. But Love that's that. disgusting. Oh, shit. I have a coffee story, too. Oh, my God. So I am white trash, okay? I cannot drink coffee unless it's, like, tons of cream, tons of sugar, tons of ice, you know, watered down. And I went to um, – I was with my cousin in Australia. We were going book shopping. And she took me to this, like, fancy-ass coffee place. And I was like – I didn't know what the fuck anything on the menu was. I was like, what is this? What the hell is a macchiato? <laughs> so I ordered something randomly. They gave me a shot glass with like coffee. I was like, what is this? Where's the ice? Why is it so small? Like, what can I do? And she was like, you should try it. It's gonna taste good. <laughs> I went to like the vending machine. I got a water bottle. I drank some of the water. I poured the coffee in and I shook the water <laughs> and it tasted amazing. Not coffee flavored water. I'm <laughs> crying. It was like, like, okay, like this much with an espresso shot. That is like a full like Starbucks coffee. That is at least an Americano before you put the milk in. <laughs> okay, fair, fair. I love watching 24 hour readathons, but haven't tried doing, you should, you should participate in Sapphicathon which I host with Jesse every month. It's on the What's 26th. The next it's on the 26th. Um, I'm reading uh, Payback's a Witch and Sydney from Sid Bookworm is our, is our uh, guest host. And she's mm -hmm. buddy reading that with me. And Jesse's reading a black sapphic book, but I don't think they picked one yet. So okay. there's not like a group book. We just have prompts this month. But yeah, it's a 24 hour read of thought. Is your name Pam? This book belongs to Pam. I'm assuming it's Pam. You should participate and vlog it, and I'll watch it. Last, when I was hosting Staffikathon, <laughs> Jan DNF'd the book we were reading. <laughs> Just oh saying. God, yeah. It was the first book or first month that we had a group book, and it was satisfaction guaranteed. And I felt so bad because a subscriber sent me that book, and I didn't want a DNF. But then Jesse read this one sex scene. Remember the freaking hawk cry, and how it was the I sex read the scene. Whole book. Of course, I remember that. <laughs> Yeah, Jesse read the whole book too, and I was like, thank you for volunteering as tribute. So I didn't have to read it. <laughs> uh, but okay. We're at like 50 minutes. Oh Should my god, I feel like I did not that just flew by. <laughs> I know. I was trying to get it like closer to an hour. I mean, I figured me and you were gonna talk after the live anyway and probably read the chapter of Diary of Blood. <laughs> but, but anyway, should we end? Do we have final thoughts? 
about um, Black Sunshine? It was amazing. I highly <laughs> recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god y'all will probably see oh this vlog will come up or be up like i don't know beginning of march probably maybe end of february i don't know but i'll definitely be vlogging the second book as well and not shutting up about it on instagram per usual and please text me like all the spoilers because who knows right <laughs> i mean look 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 i gave a court of thrones and roses one star but A Court of Mist and Fury got five stars. So if Karina pulls a Sarah J Mass, who knows? Yeah, who I can knows? Right on that dick all over again, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's so rare for me to like sequels more than the first book too, so. But we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Follow McKay on everything. His stuff will be linked down below. Look, you can have Absalon. I want both. <laughs> okay. That's the closing statement. That's, the thing. That's our conclusion. That is our understanding together. <laughs> Do you have any announcements for your channel? Um, anything? I am unreliable, so follow at your own risk. <laughs> no, he's hilarious. Go subscribe. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not you getting flustered. Every time I compliment McKay, he just like melts I'm into oblivion. Worst. I am like the worst at taking compliments. I'm like, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was a wild ride. I am too. I suck at taking compliments. Anyway, okay. Thank you so much for coming. Next month is March and my guest will be Noelle from Noelle Seven Pages. We're reading A Special Place for Women because, you know, Women's History Month. Anyway, hope y'all join. Thank you for coming to this live show. Thank you for reading the book if you did. Goodbye. See you soon. <laughs>